Okay, fellow writers, well, I heard you loud and clear. You want more guidance on tapping into the full potential of my zero to first draft Scrivener template. Well, you're in for a treat. This video is dedicated to helping you unlock all the amazing features I've packed into this template. So grab a comfy chair, maybe a cup of joe, and let's embark on this journey to writing greatness together. So some of the things we'll cover today in the video is the zero to first draft activation guide, the writer's toolbox, custom metadata and project targets, and so much more. And I can't wait to share that with you. Now, if you haven't picked up the template yet, now is a great time to do so. You can get 10% off with the discount code ZTFD10. Once again, that's ZTFD10, giving you a 10% discount for $8.99. Let's start by creating a new project using our template. It's super easy. Simply find the zero to first draft template in the writing mentor category of the new project window. Double click it to name and save your project to your Mac or PC. I suggest choosing a descriptive name, even if it's not your final choice. I'll save my project in documents, Scrivener projects, but you can also opt to save it in Dropbox. Well, with all that sorted, let's focus on the activation guide. This guide is interconnected with multiple links. By default, Scrivener opens these links in a different editor, but I prefer them to open in the same editor for easier navigation. To adjust this setting, go to Scrivener, Settings, Behaviors, Document Links, and ensure Open Clicked Document Links In is set to Current Editor. If you're using a PC, you'll find this option under File, Options, Behaviors, Document Links. Okay, guys, so let's take a peek at the next tool in our zero to first draft template here, and that is the Writer's Toolbox. It is one of my favorite tools that I have in this template. We're gonna go ahead and see it's the second one down here using the writer's toolbox. If we click that from our table of contents, it'll take us directly to this little about page. This little section is all about why you need a writer's toolbox, what's in it, how it works, etc., etc. You can see here if we open up the writer's toolbox in the, our binder, we have a couple different options. We have the log line where we can actually craft a solid long line for our novel. We have the three pillars of storytelling, which include uh, character, setting, and plot. We have some writing exercises, and these are exercises that I've been building and gathering over the years that I appreciate and I like doing. And then we have some key templates. Now these templates you may notice are outside of the frequently used template folder, and that there is a reason for that. Uh, I realized that having all my templates in this folder was getting to be quite heavy. There's just so many templates to go through. It made it kind of unusable. Uh, just too many selections here. And so what I decided to do was to take some of those ones I don't use as often and stick them in my writer's toolbox. Now, I still have them. If I need them, I can easily move one of them out and right back into my frequently used templates. And you can see how close they are too. This is not uh, a far drag and drop. That's why I put the writer's toolbox right next to my template folder here and the key templates here at the bottom. So it'd be really easy to drag those back and forth between my toolbox and my frequently used templates. And you'll see if I add that back in, there it is, Writing Sprint is now available. If I came up here to my manuscript series here, I could go ahead and add in a Writing Sprint like so. And it does have a 750 word target. If you look at that, there it is, 750 word target. It has been set up. And if I want to take that out again, I can easily just drag that back out into my key templates and have that there. And the same is true with any of these templates. If there's these, any of these templates I'm not using as much, let's say maybe I'm not, I'm done outlining, I'm not doing my uh, sketching anymore, I don't need those anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and move those into my key templates now. And mainly, I just need my chapter template. I'm probably gonna even need my zero to f uh, first draft flex plan right now. I just have a chapter template and a book template. And maybe I wanna, might wanna pull in these sim scene templates too, because at this point, hopefully I'm working on structure, hopefully I'm building scenes, and I just wanna have quick access to those right up here 
in the toolbar. Okay, so that is the writer's toolbox in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and close that up. It's just a place where you can keep all of your key tools that you have gathered over the years. Okay, we're back in our zero to first draft activation guide on the title page here. If you're not there, you can go ahead and click up here in the, in the binder to get access to that again. We'll scroll down and next we're gonna look at our custom metadata and targets. Let's start with custom metadata by clicking the link there. It'll take us to this page to tell us all about what custom metadata is and how to use it. Now in this specific template, I've gone ahead and added three custom metadata options for you. Let's go ahead to our custom metadata tab or our metadata tab rather in the top right corner here of our inspector. And you can see right there, actually looks like we got four. My, I misspoke. We have a complete option, which allows us to, to determine whether we've read a document or not. Like so we can click complete and say, hey, I've read this. And then we have three different plot structures. We have the save the cat plot structure. It goes all the way from the prologue, all the way down to the epilogue with all the beats in between. We have our three act plot structure right here. We have act one, act two, act three, et cetera, and all the little plot points in the middle of there. And of course we have the heroic journey as well with part one, part two, part three, and part four all listed in there for you, uh, depending on which plot you prefer to use. It's totally up to you. And of course you can come in here, click the three dots, and you can go on and create your own. We have a bunch of different options here. We have that text box, checkbox, list, and date. And if you wanna learn more about how to do that, you can either look at some of my previous webinars or read the section here. It kinda tells you more about it and how it works, where to find it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's take a look now at how we might use custom metadata in action. So as you can see here, we have it in our inspector here in the middle tab. We have our general metadata and we have our custom metadata. Okay, let's go ahead and set this up using a book template. So I'm gonna click my manuscript slash series name here and go ahead and click the add button, specifically the arrow, we're gonna look for a book template, we're gonna add it in here. Now, I have my outliner open, it might open up in documents view, it might open up in your uh, corporate view, but let's switch over to our outliner so we can see this. And likely, these guys are probably gonna be turned off. So let's assume it looks something like this, right? So we, we're here, we have our book template created. We're gonna open it up here. We can see we have Act 1, Act 2A, 2B, and Act 3. Now I chose that specific tr structure for my book template because I tend to use the Save the Cat uh, plotting method the most. You can change that. You could change Act 2A and 2B into a single act. Just make it Act 2, totally up to you. But the point is, I give you the option here to either use the Save the Cat plot structure three act plot structure or the heroic journey. In fact, you can use all three at the same time if you want to. Let's turn on those custom metadatas and see what they look like again. So we're gonna turn on save the cap, three act structure and the heroic journey. And if I came here, you could see here, I could, I have the book template selected. I could come here and start assigning beats. So we go with uh, no beat assigned. Let's change that to act one. And then it would be act 2A, right? And it would be act 2B and then it would be act Three. And the beauty of something like this is that I can now come in here and change these names and still keep track of what part it is, what section it is. So we could go here and this, this might be the hungry troll, right? But we know that's act one, right? And this might be the fiery dragon, right? I mean, and you can see now I can keep track of 2A and 2B. Now, something that's really interesting about this structure is we know the middle is quite a bit longer than Act 1 and Act 3. In fact, the middle probably takes up about 60 to 70% of the novel itself. Well, at least take about 20 to 30% a piece, right? Maybe thereabout, you know? So, realistically, 2A and 2B might be longer, like something like this, where we have multiple parts and each of these having a different, unique name, right? And the beauty of this is that Scrivener allows me to keep track of my structure here using my custom metadata. So I know these are all happening in Act 2A, right? And the things that occur inside of them, if I add chapters and things, I can go on and add in the different plot beats that happen in Act 2A, such as break into two, the fun and games, the midpoint, then Act 2B, bad guys close in, all is lost, dark night of the soul, et cetera, et cetera. The same is true with our three act plot structure here. I can actually use this structure in tandem with the save the cat. I could have act one setup. I could have 
act two confrontation if I have multiple act twos, right? <laughs> it's gonna make more sense here, but yeah. And we could have our act three here set up with the resolution. And the same thing with our heroic journey. We could come here and say, hey, this is part one. This is part two. This is part three, et cetera, et cetera. You get to decide how you want to do this, how you wanna structure it. It's all up to you. Now, if you do find you're favoring one structure over the other, you may actually wanna come down to your frequently used templates, find your book template, and actually go ahead and assign the beats so it's not just set up as no beat assigned. Now, I set it as no beat assigned so you can decide how you wanted to structure that, how you wanted to do that, but typically what I would do, since I use the save the cat plot structure the most, I come in here and say, hey, this is act one, this is 2A, this is 2B, this is act three. That way, when I create this template in my series folder, I actually don't have to come and do that. Uh, I could even go further and add in more structure I want if I wanted to. I could add in chapters and try to label out all those beats one by one by the chapters. Now, that may be a bit overkill. That's more of a plotter thing to do. I don't go that far because simply because I like some flexibility. I don't want to feel like I'm pigeonholed into like, hey, this chapter must be the opening image or it must be the theme stated or it must be the setup, etc. Personally, I'll leave that to you to decide. That's kind of how you can set it up and use that custom data, data to your advantage. And next up, we're gonna talk about targets. You can see here, there are two different types of targets in Scrivener. We have project targets, we have document targets. And I think you'll find that one of my favorites of all time is document targets. But let's go ahead and start with project targets and see what we've got here. This will tell you about, all about it, how to get access to it, how to open it up. I already have project targets up here in my toolbar, so I can just click that there to get access to it real quick. Let's take a peek what it might look like. I'll show you how to set up that draft deadline, uh, turning off notifications or session target calculations. That's all right here in your target sections. The main thing here is you can have the options here to change those details or your deadline. So you're gonna wanna come in here and actually make that change. Uh, whatever you choose to do there is fine. You can come in here. The main thing you're gonna look at is your draft target. And that's gonna determine based on your deadline how many words you're gonna be writing per day. So let's say I had a 100,000 word target, okay? That means if I wanted to finish by the December 31st, 2024, I have 125 days left, I'd have to write 800 words per day, which is pretty good, right? But typically, I don't find myself writing that late. So I'm gonna come here and change it. Let's say I wanted to get this done in, let's be conservative, two months from now. Uh, that would be October, right? Let's see, let's go back to, Yep, October, it's the 28th, so we'll do 28th. That's a really short window, by the way. Let's click OK. OK, that gives me 61 days, right, to do it. And that's based off my writing days of writing basically every day. I'm going to allow writing on the day of the deadline, which will give me an extra day. And you can see it'll take me 1,612 words per day. If I write that every day in 62 days, I will have reached my goal. And I can, of course, adjust this to 50,000 words and see what that looks like. 806 words, that makes sense. It's exactly half of 100K, right? So yeah, it's looking pretty good. We can change it to whatever we want it to be. This is should be a fluid number. It's a goal, a target to reach, not necessarily the end all be all, but just something to work towards, right? Okay, that's our project targets. Let's take a look at our document targets, which is where this template really shines. We have a ton of great document targets already set up. And just to give you an idea of how this works, you can see in the bottom right corner, I have a little target here. That is the target for this document, this specific document we are currently looking at in the binder. You can see it's currently 286 words. There are no targets set. So if I came here and clicked that button, it would open up this window. I could go ahead and set a target for this document. Now, this is just a practice document. So we're gonna go ahead and type in, let's do, 500 words. The minimum target, we can set that as 250. And the overrun allowance, ah, we'll leave that alone for now, but we can show target notifications if we want to. We'll click OK. And you can see right now, this target changed to a progress bar, and we have reached our minimum target. There's a little line there, it's hard to see. We've reached our minimum target, but we have not exceeded or met our document target, okay? And I could come here and change that. Let's make that 350 instead, you can see we're closer now, right? And of course, if it were actually just 250, we would have exceeded that target and our minimum, right? So it looks 
really good, really easy to do. Let's take a look at some of these targets we have set up in this template by default. Let me go ahead and close this out and zero that out. I'll make it go back to that, just that regular target symbol there. Now, if you didn't move your scene templates down into your frequently used templates, they'll be here in the key template section of your writer's toolbox. We did that earlier though, if you recall. So right now we have all of our actual chapter book and scene templates located directly in our frequently used templates. And honestly, this is probably how mine will look uh, after I'm done, like outlining, plotting, all that jazz. I'm gonna be focusing primarily on just structure, right? So we can see here I have a chapter template and all those have targets in it, 500, 500. I have scene templates where I just have a bunch of different blank scenes that just have different targets set up. So let's say I wanna change this, oops, sorry, another book template, this chapter template, I wanted it to have, instead of a 500 word, I wanted to have a 1,250 word, right? And I could even bring that fi other 500 word down back in here, whatever I wanna do. I can duplicate this, I can make it however I want to, whatever I feel is appropriate, I can do. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 1,250 words. You can see the target is set up. Come here, there's no minimum target. I could set these up, I could add minimum targets, I could add overland allowances, I could turn on so, no, target notifications, whatever I want to happen again and again when I'm creating these chapters or folders is how I'll set it up. Now by default, thankfully, most of this is already set up for you. You really don't have to do much work. You can literally just come in here, click the chapter template, and there you go. You can also likewise find a scene and choose any one of these scene templates. Let's say you created a chapter template. It turns out you need another scene and with a target that's close to your thinking, maybe 750 words. You can drop that in there and have that ready to go and be working towards that goal of 750 words without having to go in again and again and uh, add in that target. So if I just did a regular text document, that's what I would have to do. I'd have to give it a name initially. I'd have to go ahead and set that target up every single time. I'd probably have to come in here as well, add in that to-do label. You can see how that process can bog you down. And honestly, if you're anything like me, and you probably are, if those things aren't already set up, you're probably not going to do it, right? So it's one of those things that kind of eliminates, it takes the psychological factor out for us. We don't have to think about doing it. We have it set up already. We just have to add it in and use it. Guys, that's document targets in a nutshell. Let's go back to our document target section here. See if there's anything else we missed. I don't think so. Looks like that's everything. Yep. But you can read through this and that'll give you a good idea of how to use these tools in your Zero to First Draft novel. Okay, we're back to our Zero to First Draft activation guide for the last time. You know, there's just so many great things I've built into this template. Uh, I don't have time to go into them all right now. This is just a quick overview of some of my favorite tools and things that we have in here. Uh, we talked about the writer's toolbox. We talked about staying organized. We talked about using document templates, custom metadata targets. Uh, we have things like the zero to first draft writing plan, a great little uh, section that talks about all about uh, my ideology behind writing and how I approach it. We have collections and other fun stuff that go on here. There's just lots of fun things you can kind of mess around with. There's even, like I said, we haven't gone through half of what's in our writer's toolbox here. There's just so much great content in here. And so I would encourage you to approach it in a kind of a piecemeal approach. Read through it at your leisure. Don't feel like you have to learn it all at once. You know, I didn't learn all this at once. It was kind of a practice thing. I learned one thing and then another thing. And over time, my knowledge and my skills grew. I got better and better. And hopefully this gives you enough to get started to feel comfortable in using this template. I'm excited to see what you do with it. I am having a lot of fun with it myself. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. There'll be more videos, I'm sure, uh, where I get into the nitty gritty of this uh, down the road. So thank you for joining me today and I will catch you all next time.